Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm really excited to do. It is going to be all about the new brand, Auric. This is Samantha Ravendahl's brand that is launching on Tuesday the 26th. I was so lucky to be able to receive the PR from Sam and today's video is going to be a very in-depth video on the Auric collection. I'm going to be showing multiple different ways to apply the Glow Lust. I'm going to be showing three different looks using the Smoke Reflex on the eyes. I'm going to be doing wear tests, comparison giving my full thoughts on everything now that I've been trying out these products for the past several days. So we definitely have a lot to get through in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. So there are so many things that I want to say when it comes to the Auric brand. I'm going to kind of save my thoughts until the end uh, just because I might get a little bit long-winded and I feel like a lot of you are going to want to see these products right away and I have been wearing them over the past several days. So again, this is not going to be a first impression. I'm really going to be giving my full review after trying everything in this collection, trying it different ways and really seeing how the products do wear on me too. Again, the brand is going to be launching on the 26th. I will link a Sam's uh, release video down below where she gives all of the different information about Auric. I highly suggest that you watch that video because it, she has a lot of information in there. So the Glow Lust is a radiant luminizer. This is going to retail for $45 USD. So it's for those who lust for luminosity packed with ultra fine pearl and skin loving mix of squalene, glycerin, and propendial. Artistry grade adjustable formula gives you an instant radiance and hydration. It can be worn alone, blend it with your favorite skincare, or use as a highlighter on top of foundation. There's going to be seven different shades that are launching. I got the three lightest shades, so I will be showing swatches of those. I do also try each different shade on my face. You can see how it looks. Morganite is a light cool beige, selenite is a light warm beige, and pyrite is a medium olive. Those are the three shades that I received. And for the Smoke Reflect, we have a cream and powder eyeshadow duo. These retail for $39 each. It says a smoke show in a jar. Heads will turn with these eye-catching shadow duos. Create creamy, matte, or metallic glitter looks with two luxe formulas in a single gorgeous package. Under the top lid is a light reflecting micro glitter eyeshadow infused with high shine pearls. Inside the glass is a smooth long wear creaseless cream eyeshadow. We have Defiance, which is a bronze gold, Temper is a rose gold, and Ego is a pewter and silver. I'm going to jump into the demos first. Now, I do live in small town rural Iowa, so a lot of times I do not get packages in any sort of timely manner. So I know a lot of uh, people were getting their PR packages on Friday. I actually didn't get mine until Monday at about 8 p.m. So instead of, I had planned to do like a first impression style video, I had everything ready to go on Friday. I was ready to film for the moment that package showed up and when it didn't come I thought okay let's switch gears a little bit so since I couldn't actually start filming with the collection on until Tuesday I thought let me do something really in-depth and try to give you the most amount of information I can in this video I really hope that you find these demos and the wear test helpful so let's jump into those first hello okay we're getting real up close and personal for this video so for the first way that I'm going to apply it I'm going to use just the glow lust as kind of like my primer, my base, and then I'm going to top it with some powder. This is something that I used to do a lot with Charlotte Tilbury's Wonder Glow Primer. That was a fan, fan favorite primer of mine for such a long time. It was also when I had normal skin and not acne, and I was also very dry, so I loved the Wonder Glow to give me some luminosity, then I felt like I just needed a little bit of powder on top. Now, clearly, I do have hormonal acne. I also have more combo to oily skin now instead of when I used to be super super dry so I'm not sure I'm going to love it this way but I wanted to show you and then also if you do have you know some trouble skin or you're a little bit more more oily you can see how this could potentially work on you too so for the shade I grabbed out pyrite this one out of the three is the um, like darkest in tone that they sent and since I'm just gonna be doing some powder and all of my powders are pretty light I don't always love to be a pale princess. I keep meaning to like self tan, but who has time for that? Not me. So this is the one that I want to do because I feel like it's just gonna make me feel a little bit better about myself. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to take a small stippling brush. This is from Sigma. This is their F80 Air Flat Kabuki. And I'm just going to do like that to start us off with. I'm just going to dot it around some areas and then Kind of buff this in. I'm gonna bring it down onto my neck also. I was curious about with this, with having acne, is you know, usually when we put on something that's more highlighting, it will draw attention. So I was like, I don't know if it's gonna make my breakouts look even worse. <laughs> so I put 
thing. Um, so again, I'm not sure this is going to be my favorite way to apply it. I actually really like the color pyrite for what I'm trying to do here. Like this could be a good shade to mix in with even maybe like a lighter foundation because I feel like it gave me a little bit of color, uh, which I do appreciate. Um, I wouldn't say that there's any sort of like camouflage happening for my breakouts, but I also don't feel like they're more spotlighted. So I was kind of wondering where it would kind of fall. Like I feel like my skin looks pretty similar to how we started. It just has a little bit more color. It obviously has a lot more glow. I mean, you can see that it has a lot more glow. Uh, I did want to mention I used my Good Molecules uh, Silicone Free Priming Moisturizer. So that's what it's looking like just with pyrite alone. I am going to do a little bit of my NARS Soft Matte Concealer. A little bit of that concealer and dot it over the areas that I want to forget exist on my skin. I'm just going to use the same concealer for a little bit on my under eyes. The Sigma brush that I applied pyrite with, I'm just going to tap over where I applied the concealer. I'm just gonna put my face in the camera so you can see what my skin is looking like. Nice and up close. Okay, so I feel pretty good about this. I feel like my skin looks glowy and healthy without being like too much again because I am more oily like I notice that I kind of do want to you know pay extra attention to powder like here on my forehead but I don't really notice any other areas of my face and I'm like oh wait that's too much but you know I also want to see kind of how it lasts throughout the day and how many times I have to powder because I pretty much always have to powder my face which has been it's just been interesting when your skin changes so drastically in such a short period of time of trying to get used to like the new you. You know, I always have to powder throughout the day, so I will see how many times I feel like it's so extra that, you know, it would bother me type of thing. But I'm just going to use my number seven Lift and Illuminate Triple Action Powder. I have the shade Light Medium. So I am just going to press this pretty much over all of my face, including my under eyes. This is a check-in. I've had the pyrite on for about five hours now with my concealer and my powder. Honestly, I feel like things are going pretty well. I was worried with more oily skin that I was gonna be like super glowy and just like, uh, cause I haven't touched up at all. I haven't powdered at all, haven't done anything yet. And honestly, I'm sitting down to film another video and I really don't feel the need to powder right now, which I'm kind of shocked about. This is a little bit surprising to me, but I still think, I think things are looking good so far. This is my final check-in for today. So again, I have not powdered or touched anything up. I'm actually super impressed with this. I, I mean, I thought for sure I would have to powder <laughs> putting on such a glowy product. I just thought within like, usually when I do my makeup and I film it, and then I do my hair and I change and I get everything ready to film a video. By the time I'm sitting down to film that video, I'm usually already powdering. So to feel like I could go a whole day without it, I'm actually really, really shocked, but, but in a good way. I feel like this one went pretty well. The first Smoke Reflect Duo that I'm gonna try out is in Temper, and this one is the Rose Gold. So you have your more metallic on top here and then the cream at the bottom. This is the swatches for temper, so the metallic on top, then the cream, and then I did my best to mix the other two at the bottom. I was thinking about using my finger initially, but honestly from the swatch, like it's pretty thick. Like I think I was kind of expecting it to be maybe a little bit more like liquidy, but it really does feel like, I'm gonna say like a firm cream. <laughs> I don't know if I know what that means. I feel like using a brush is actually gonna be in the best interest for me and I honestly don't like using my fingers a lot. That's why I don't really gravitate towards cream or liquid products because they're usually best with your fingers and I'm like. I use this Moda brush, it's their Triad Eye. I'm just gonna try to grab a little bit here because it is, it's like this thicker, almost like a little bit more like moussey esque And then I'm just going to start to pack that on my eyelid. Just kind of using the brush to buff along my crease. I went a little bit hard out here, so don't mind that. I'll just clean that up, but I really wanted to just focus this on the lid and then I got carried away. Okay, that shade is actually so beautiful though. Oh, I like that. Just on its own, that's, that's really pretty. 
I mean, I really enjoy rose golds, which is why this is, you know, the first one that I went for. But that shade is so, so pretty. See, if you like really simple, kind of like those one and done eye looks, this could probably be a good option for you. I feel like this would probably be best applied with the fingers because you can see from the swatch, it doesn't have a lot of kind of like a base to it. So I feel like usually with these, it is better with your fingers. On top. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, gosh, that shade mixed with the rose gold is actually so gorgeous. <gasps> okay, okay. I wasn't sure how I would feel about the products. And I will say, like, I don't love putting my fingers in makeup, but if I can get something really pretty out of it, I'm going to be happy. Look at me trying to be like a real YouTuber and only do my makeup in this tiny mirror. Like, I'm really trying to be Desi over here. Close up of temper. Oh my gosh, that's really pretty. That's actually really pretty. I'm very happy. Okay, good. I felt like that was pretty easy to do, even though I don't work with these types of products all that much, but I think that came out pretty well. All right, and this is the final eye look with temper as the eyeshadow. To wear test number two, what we are doing today is mixing the Glow Lust in with a foundation. Mix it with my Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Foundation. I normally lean towards a natural finish foundation, that's my favorite, but I do also like a luminous foundation because again, I was used to being dry for like a solid decade. <laughs> I had dry skin. So that's mostly what my foundation collection consists of, but uh, this one is I, I probably I would say my favorite out of my full coverage more mattifying style foundations So I thought it would be a good one to pair with the glow lust today I'm gonna be applying with a damp beauty sponge. This is from over cosmetics I did use the same good molecules primer uh, So we are ready to test this out. I'm just gonna add a pump like so I'm gonna add a pump of the Shiseido. I'm in the shade 240 for the Shiseido I'm going to start to tap on and then blend out and see how that looks. I'm curious how this way will work for my more combo skin because I was really impressed using it alone with concealer. So my first thoughts for the foundation and glow less this way is right off the bat, I don't find it to be like overly glowy. I think that looks pretty good. I mean, it still looks like my Shiseido finish for the foundation. I can just tell that there is a little bit more dewiness, maybe like here on my cheekbones and a little bit here on my forehead, but I don't know, I kind of was expecting it to be really, really glowy, but that's usually what happens throughout the day. <laughs> Again, I usually do uh, powder my skin uh, quite, quite a bit throughout the day also, or I have to say that I'm liking the way that this looks. So to jump into another Smoke Reflect today, I'm going to be using Defiance. This one is the bronze and the gold. So we have really beautiful gold here and then your cream metallic base. And then here are the swatches. And this last one is the two mixed together. And I'm going to try to use just my fingers today. I'm just going to like lightly tap my finger in it and see how this goes. I did prime my eyes just with my concealer and powder. I don't love applying with my fingers because I do have longer nails. So sometimes it's a little bit harder for me, especially like on the inner part of my eye to get everything, but thought I could test out the application this way too. I'm gonna bring this one as high into my crease as I did with temper. And then I'm gonna go in uh, right away with the topper shade and see if maybe because before I did both eyes with the cream base and Then did the topper so I want to see if there's any sort of difference this way like maybe doing it sooner Will wow Wow Okay, I mean I still I really liked how temper looked but this has like more pizzazz so could be the shade or the different way that I'm applying it to, but I just wanted to see if maybe there'd be any difference if like the base is a little tacky at all. So that's what I was trying to see, but that's, wow, that's really super easy to apply. Again, just going to kind of tap along the crease here, but like, 
I really don't even feel like I need a brush. Wow. I like that so far with the two creams that I've tried. You can also wear them on their own. I thought Temper especially was super pretty. Just the cream base on its own. But this too, just a really gorgeous bronze. And it has more metallic to it. So I feel like, again, if you wanted to, you could just wear this by itself. Oh, okay. So we'll have to do a little cleaning up there. My nail got a little, a little out of control. I want to go in quickly with that topper shade. Wow. Ooh, these are no joke. I really wasn't sure what I was going to expect from these. Just because they're not my usual style. But wow, are they easy to use. I'm... Here is Defiance on my eyes. That is really pretty also. And it was shockingly easy for me to apply with my fingers. I just wanted to give it a try because I feel like a lot of people would maybe gravitate towards their fingers for this also. So wanted to give that a shot. So I'm going to finish off my eye look and then I'll come back to show you the finished eye look too. I have the rest of my makeup done. So I wanted to come back to show you what it's looking like. I've probably had my foundation on for about an hour, hour and a half or so because I've been doing some other filming in between. So this is what my skin is looking like with the Glow Lust mixed with my Shiseido foundation. This is my eye look all finished off with my Urban Decay mascara. I did a little bit of shadow on the lower lash line and then also for an inner corner, but I'm loving the way that this looks. I was just doing some filming and I like I could not stop staring at my eyes. I was like this actually looks so pretty. Also no fallout. I've had no fallout on my face. That was something that I hadn't mentioned before but I have like no no cleanup needed. So very happy. Very happy. So it is the end of the night. I have had this on for about eight hours the glow less mixed in with my shiseido foundation i have done nothing to my face all day no touch-ups no more powder or anything the only spot where i feel like i look extra glowy is like right here on the forehead like in the middle of the brows i didn't add any extra highlight today i thought about it but then i kind of wanted to see how it would how it would do without any extra highlight so uh but you can still see like cheekbones are glowy things are going well there I'm a little bit surprised at how much I'm enjoying this and also just how pretty I think my skin looks. The day that I am recording this segment, I had a video go up where I was wearing the Glow Less with the concealer and the powder and I got so many compliments on my skin. And today, like I'm just, I'm feeling this. Like I'm, I'm feeling this right now. Also the eyes, not creasing funny. I'm not getting a lot of fallout, like I'm not getting any fallout, like everything is holding up real well so far. Moving on to our third and final wear test, I'm going to be using the shade Morganite for this one. What I'm going to be doing is first applying the highlighter to cheekbones anywhere that I want to highlight, then I'm going to do my you know, full foundation and everything else, makeup routine. Then I'm going to add a little bit, at least I guess we'll see at the end, but I was planning to add a little bit more of Morganite on top when everything is finished as a highlight. A little bit of the reverse foundation routine that I've seen Sam do, and I've done it several times because of her, and I think it looks really pretty. I'm just going to take a little bit on my finger and start to dot this onto my cheekbones here. Just blend this out it's the same primer that i have been doing okay i feel like i got a lot on that side so i'm gonna do some down my nose i kind of usually do like a c motion with the highlight then just a little on like just the center points of my face so a little bit definitely goes a long way especially with this style of technique the glow lust is a little bit thicker well quite a bit thicker in texture i would say compared to the uh, Charlotte Tilbury at the Hollywood flawless filter and really a small amount will take you a long way like this Is it's going to last me forever <laughs> once I have that done I'm just gonna come in with my foundation. I'm using one of my favorites today the Pat McGrath sublime foundation I'm in the shade light medium 10 and I am just going to apply this with a brush. This is one of my favorite foundation brushes the BK Beauty 101 all right, so here is just the foundation added on top. So I feel like I can definitely see 
some glow in this area here. The Pat McGrath foundation finish is just very natural. That's why it's one of my favorites because I just prefer something that's really natural, kind of a more medium coverage. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish off the rest of my makeup. Last eye look using the Final Smoke Reflect. This one is in Ego. So we have the Silver Slash Pewter for this one. And then here are the swatches. Again, this one is the two mixed together. I actually really like this color. When I swatched it, I was like, oh, okay, that's fun. So I'm excited to try this one. I actually thought they were pretty easy to apply with my fingers, which is <laughs> funny to me because I'm not, I don't really like putting my fingers in makeup. I don't enjoy swatching. When I get something new, my first thought isn't like, let me swatch this whole thing. I'm like, oh, let me go get my brush and try it on. I had a really easy time applying these, so I'm just gonna use my finger again, and I'm gonna start with that metallic cream, and then just pat this on. And then coming into the top, I'm just going to pat that over. This one kind of gives me a little bit like Almost like those mermaid-ish vibes. Like I feel a little, feel a little like emerald to this one, but it's also really pretty. I'm gonna take a little blending brush just to kind of smooth out the edges here. So this is Ego on my eyes. I think that this is a really cool color. I like this one a lot. I have the rest of my face makeup on, so I'm gonna use a little bit more Morganite on, again, just like the tops of my cheekbones and the other areas where I usually do add highlighter. Start with a little bit on my hand, and I'm actually gonna use a brush and just kind of swirl it around like so, and then start to apply it, because sometimes I feel like with highlight especially, if I'm putting a cream or liquid highlight on after the rest of my foundation. I swear I just see fingerprints. <laughs> and I love that look. And so I do have a powder down. I'm trying out the Fenty Beauty new powder foundation today, but I did use cream products for both my bronzer and blush. But I want to see how this would lay over the powder too. That's That's really beautiful as a highlight. Because it just, I, I don't know how to explain this, like it just makes your skin glowy. Like it's not, like it's not glittery at all. It's also not that kind of like beaming highlight, which I like. I like a blinding highlight. But this is such more of just kind of that more natural look, which again, I know usually that's kind of in the same language when you're describing cream products. It looks really pretty as a highlight. I'm going to do some on my nose. Like can't get over how much I like that. What? I also feel like this is a product that you like can't go overboard with. Like I feel like I can just keep adding and it just, just, wow. So that is where I'm going to leave this. I'll do a check-in at the end of the night once again, but this way so far has also really impressed me. If you wanna add some lashes for this eye look just to, just to see, just to do different things. So that's it for the eyes with the Ego shade. I really do like this color. It has been about eight hours once again, and here is what I'm looking like right now. I have done no touching up throughout the day. It has been a crazy day, but I think my skin looks great. I think my eyes especially look great. How well these stay on, no creasing, no fallout, no nothing. <laughs> I'm so impressed with them. But again, I feel like my skin looks really nice with this as the highlight. Just really nice and natural, glowy look. I don't know what else I can say. I'm super impressed with everything that I've tried. This is my third and final wear test and I'm impressed. Some further thoughts on these products. I wanted to first start off with the Glow Lust, and I actually wanted to jump into a comparison with the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I definitely got a lot of requests to compare these two products. Uh, I've known that Sam has loved the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter since I've been a fan of Sam and watched her videos for many years. And I kept wanting to buy this one, and I kept wanting to buy this one. I actually just got this in PR from Charlotte about three weeks ago, but I immediately started trying it out because I was curious 
serious about it. Now, I'm not a big cream or liquid person. If you watch my channel, you know that I'm kind of slowly trying to dabble into it, but I would still consider myself, you know, I just enjoy a good old powder highlight, powder bronzer. <laughs> powder blush but since I had gotten this I was like you know I really want to try it out so I had just started dabbling with this when this arrived so this isn't a product that I've used for many years and I have a whole ton of thoughts like I was trying to get a review ready for the Hollywood Flawless filter but I understand why people were wanting to see comparisons of it so I'll do some swatches here now my Hollywood Flawless filter is in the shade 3 light medium honestly the shade was one of the first things that jumped out at me as being a difference because if, if you can tell on camera Camera, the Charlotte Tilbury actually pulls a little bit more orange and I feel like one thing with Charlotte Tilbury which is a brand that I love a brand that I talk about all of the time I like to make jokes that I'm friends with Charlotte Tilbury and some people think I'm being serious it's a brand I continue to repurchase from and love the products but sometimes the shade selections I don't feel like are the best and I really didn't notice how how orange this pulled until I swatched it against selenite from auric and I feel like from what I have seen with the three products that I received and the other products that I've received in, and the other products I've seen in videos I feel like the shade selection is much better I feel like that was done really really well uh, another thing that I feel like is definitely different and this was pointed out by Sam and I've seen it pointed out by some others is that the Charlotte tends to give a more metallic almost like a more shiny finish you can probably see it in the swatch also but uh, with between the the auric and the Charlotte Tilbury Charlotte's is going to be a more thinner formula the auric is a little bit more thicker but it doesn't have that shiny metallic feel to it it really just has a glow like that's the word that I kept using when I was doing the demos was it's glowy it's glowy it's glowy I look glowy that's what I think of and to me this looks a lot more natural than the Charlotte and now I don't think the Charlotte Tilbury is bad again I'm newer to trying this product so I've been like trying to get my thoughts together but especially when I compared the two I was like oh there's I feel like there's actually quite a difference between these two and between the two I actually am preferring the org just because I feel like it looks more natural and something that I think of when I think of cream and liquid products is a more kind of natural finish to the skin and that's what the auric gives now the auric is retailing for $45 I believe Charlotte Tilbury retails for $44 there is a size difference with these so the Charlotte Tilbury is one fluid ounce and the auric is 1.18 fluid ounces so you are getting more product in here I do also prefer the auric packaging wise Charlotte Tilbury is a doe foot I like that you can control the amount of product that you get on here but because I am acne prone I really try I'm trying to be more aware of not putting a doe foot onto my skin and then putting it back in here and then potentially transferring bacteria with the auric sam does explain in her video why the cap is so hard to get off it is a little bit more challenging but then you do have a pump on here but the pump is it's really nice because you can have some more control you can do a really small amount you can do a half pump you could do a full pump if you want to and i also feel like a little bit goes a long way whereas with the Charlotte Tilbury I find myself going into back into and then pulling the doe foot out again a handful of times where I feel like even such a small amount of product goes a long way with the auric so between the two if I had to like pick a winner right now again being newer to both of these really I like auric for a few different reasons like I just said but if for those wondering like are these the exact same thing like is it worth it to get the glow lust if I have the Hollywood flawless filter I do think that you will see enough differences and in that you're like oh I didn't just spend $45 on a product that I already spent $44 on in my collection you could probably see from the demos that I am actually very impressed with this product and I really I wasn't expecting to be I thought out of the two this is probably going to be the one that I'm not going to reach for all that often because just again my personal makeup preferences I don't go for these types of products a lot that's why I didn't buy the Charlotte Tilbury I just thought I don't know if it's actually going to be worth it to me and all of the three different ways that I've tried this I have really liked it I do have combo oily skin again I have hormonal acne acne prone skin one thing that I can notice sometimes if even if I use a a really radiant foundation such as the Anastasia Luminous foundation 
within like an hour, I'm like, okay, I'm looking a little too oily. I'm looking a little too shiny. I need to do a lot of powdering. The glow lust, and I'll use the word glowy, it makes me glowy in a really beautiful way without being too overboard. So I was really curious for those of you who are combo oily, how is this gonna work on your skin? How is it gonna hold up? Are you gonna be looking like a fool within an hour of putting it on and needing to make sure that you have your powder or your blotting papers next to you or whatever it may be? But I've been really impressed, and again, the demos and the check-ins will show that too, that it really held up so well and continued to just give me that healthy glow throughout the day without being too overboard. I actually love it as a highlight. I also did not think I would like it as a highlight. <laughs> I thought it's not going to be enough for me. I like really glowy blinding highlights. If you don't know, I did a collaboration with Ofra Cosmetics and we have a highlight out together. And Ofra is known for their over the top blinding highlights. But I think it's beautiful. And again, the word I keep going back to is natural. That is a reason why I like the Charlotte Tilbury brand so much is I feel like the products are easy to use and they make you look naturally beautiful like yourself but better without being like too done. And that's what I'm feeling from this brand is cruelty free. I really do enjoy that Sam wanted to come out with a luxury cruelty free brand because that's not something we see a lot. And I know it was just announced that Charlotte Tilbury is no longer considered cruelty free, which is definitely a blow. But now we have Auric, so we have more options. It comes to the Smoke Reflex. Once again, these are not products that I have a ton of in my collection. I'm mostly reaching in for my palettes. I have a very small singles collection. These have really impressed me also, and for a few different reasons. So not only are they super easy to use, I tried them with brushes, and I also tried them with my fingers in the demo. Honestly, I'm not even someone who likes to use my fingers to apply makeup, but these are just, they're so easy to use that I don't mind using my fingers. The reason why I really like these is because you do get the duo. I think if she had just come out with something like the topper shade or just something like the cream, I would not be so excited about them. But because you can use them together, that to me is what's making it different. Like to me, this obviously isn't just a single shadow, it's a duo, but I don't have a lot of other products like this in my collection. So again, if it was just this, like what would I, what would I do? Like I, what, I wouldn't be able to just use that by itself. I'd have to go into a palette. And then if I was going into a palette, it'd be like, well, what's the point? Why would I have to do this? But because they're a duo and each duo complements each other so well, so easy to use. And if you like a one and done shadow type of look, I think that these are gonna be a great option for you, even though technically it's a, you know, it's a twofer, but it still gives you that one and done type of look with just like a little bit more oomph to it, yet it's still really easy to use. So I think that's a big thing for me of why, when I was like, okay, so wait, so why am I enjoying these products versus some of my other, what I would consider single products? It's because, you know, really they're not. You can use one or the other. Again, when I first used Temper and I just put the cream down, I was like, I mean, I could just do that if I wanted to. So I like that you have some options. You have some fluidity with these. I, I think that's a really awesome thing. The packaging is fabulous on these. I love that you get the little mirror on here. Super easy to use. I, but also, again, you've seen in the demos and in the check-ins at the end of the night, these do not crease. I know the card on here says it's a smooth, long wear, creaseless cream shadow. It is. You saw that. <laughs> you saw at least an eight hour, I think I had an eight hour wear test. Each one I have Ego on my eyes right now, which I'll be doing a wear test in, but I'm feeling pretty confident that I know what's going to happen. These do not crease. You don't get fallout with them. Even when you're applying that top shade, there's no fallout throughout the night. There's no fallout. I have pretty sensitive eyes, so sometimes certain formulas can bother me. I've had no eye sensitivity. These are great. I'm I'm very surprised. I sent Sam a DM on Twitter. Kind of mentioned my fear of like, I didn't really know if this collection was going to be for me, but girl. But girl. Those are my thoughts on the products, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the brand, about the price range, about Sam, about all, all of that. I wanted to give kind of my final wrap-up thoughts here. So first of all, what I wanted to say is a really big thank you to Sam for including me on this PR list. When I got the message from her two days before Christmas that she wanted my address to send PR, I was absolutely floored. When she said that she wanted my address, quite honestly, my first thought was I should say no. Because like I've said, 
I am not so much into cream or liquid. I thought, what if I get this collection and I absolutely hate it because no matter how much I like a brand, no matter how much I like a person collaborating on a brand or coming out their own brand, if I don't like something, I have to tell you. And sometimes it's as simple as the products just aren't my personal preferences. They're not bad products. They just don't aren't suited for me. I can't see myself reaching for these often. Again, I have to be honest with my thoughts there. So I thought, you know, what if I have to come on and like, <laughs> like give bad reviews? Like, oh, I'm gonna feel like terrible to do that. But I also struggle a lot with self sabotage. Uh, it is something that I have been trying to get over for the longest time, and I. I also have a podcast, it's called Start Inspired, and if you heard my 2021 intentions video, I talk about a really big opportunity that I had on YouTube that I said no to, that I still think about almost every single day. And I said no because I struggle with self-sabotage. So when I had that first thought and I started to type back like a thanks, but you can leave me off the list, I thought, Samantha, get it together. What are you doing? Like, you're so excited about this. I was planning to buy products myself anyways. Like. You just have to do it. At least people can see it on your skin tone and on your combo oily acne skin and see how it will help people. And you know that you can do a good review. Like, why would you not do this video? And I was watching Sam's live chat that she was doing when she had first announced the brand and hearing her say that like 90% or something of the PR list was, you know, what we would consider micro influencers or smaller influencers. And when you Google Auric or when you search Auric on YouTube, I have already found so so many new creators that I have subscribed and I'm now watching their videos because I found them through Auric and I thought that is such a cool thing. I feel like this is a brand that has so much well intention behind them but it's not only going to just be intention, I feel like this brand is going to continue to bring those good intentions to fruition with their releases, with something like their campaign videos. When I watched the Aura campaign video, I had a lot of different feelings because to see so much representation in there between male and female and different races and just people that looked different from one another, it really moved me in a way that at first I was kind of caught off guard by because let's be honest, I see myself represented in a lot of beauty campaigns. When I was starting to like feel these stirrings, <laughs> I thought, well, like what's going on here? Because that is something that I have had the privilege to be able to see myself represented across beauty campaigns for all of these years. I've, I'm not the one that's being left out. So I thought, why do I have these feelings? <laughs> I am an empath, so sometimes you know I can, I can feel a lot of different feelings, but I thought of all of the people that were going to be watching that release video and being able to see themselves in there. And it just made me feel like this brand is going to be different. And we've only had one release, you know, we and the release hasn't even technically happened yet, but we only have one release so far, but like I said, I don't feel like it's just intentions that we're gonna get with Auric. We're actually going to see the talk being talked and the walk being walked. You no, know, when I was watching her live and people were saying, well, yes, you had this person and that person and this person and that person and that person, but you didn't have this person. And Sam said, we've only done one campaign. We have done one shoot and this is how we are going to be moving forward. And I truly believe that with each campaign that we see and each launch that we see, we are still going to have a good representation and inclusivity is going to be at the forefront of this brand. And that is something that I really appreciate and what makes me really excited for Auric. Pricing, I know I mentioned in my Will I Buy It also that yes, the products are higher priced. As Sam has said, this is going to be a luxury brand. They are luxury and cruelty free, which is not something that are usually synonymous with each other so I think that is a fabulous thing uh, but I will also say that these products do feel luxury from the pump to all of these little details to even the boxes I mean with the smoke reflex these products have weight to them they feel luxury they're going to look luxury if you put them out on your vanity uh, and then when it comes to the actual like luxury makeup side of things they're actually definitely not on the highest level when it comes to luxury brands and again i mentioned this in my will i buy it video but when people are saying you know a brand shouldn't have higher prices when they first launch that really doesn't make any sense brand is launching they are launching their brand their aesthetic their vibe their price range what they're doing this couldn't have come out as a ten dollar product and then next year raised it to 45 
this is the auric brand this is their vibe this is what they're gonna have going on this is what we can expect from them in the future if it's not your thing that's okay too i love what sam's doing i'm really inspired by this whole brand which i'm sure you've probably gotten from this video i tend to get really rambly when i'm excited about something or when i'm like genuinely fired up about something and that's the way that auric makes me feel i really enjoy these products i'm completely caught off guard I was at least hoping that I would like them a little bit so I could say like, yeah, you know, like these are good, but maybe if you don't like cream or liquid, you know, maybe just try one thing and go from there. Quite honestly, I'm so impressed with these products and I wanted to make sure that I took some time and tried to remove myself from, I really enjoyed the creator of this brand and actually just review the brand and the products. And that's why I'm really, I'm actually kind of grateful that the package showed up a little bit later because being able to actually put these products on my face and keep them on my face and eyes for multiple hours at a time to actually get a feel for how they work made me understand that these really are great products and I can wholeheartedly recommend them to you. Now again, if these are not your thing or these are not your shades or you just don't see yourself reaching for them, then that's okay if it's not for you. But if you've been considering getting something, I really do give this brand Two thumbs up, Full. I would fully recommend these products and I'm really excited for the launch. I really hope that you found this video helpful. I wanted to do a really good job on it. So I hope I gave you some good information so you can decide before the launch on the 26th. Another congratulations to Sam. Thank you so much for having me included as a part of your brand launch. It really does mean a lot to me. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. I hope you also consider subscribing before you go and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.